Greetings, everybody. So, on this video, we are going to discuss about the cobweb diagrams for chaotic systems, and specifically discrete time. So, I have already some videos about bifurcation diagrams and phase portraits for discrete systems. I strongly suggest you go uh, watch this first and then come back and uh, watch this video. So, uh, I'm going to explain the cobweb diagram using the logistic map. So, let me remind everybody one dimensional system. Discrete time, okay, it has one parameter, which is R, and one initial condition. So how do we solve this? If I know R and X0, it's simply a recursive formula, okay, so a for loop. So I start computing X1, then from X1 I compute X2, then X3, and then X4, and so on, so I have a time series. So this logistic map has a very rich behavior. So let's see it. Now, let's start from the basics. Uh, let's say I put R equals 2. And for this case, the system is periodic with a period one. So this is the time series here, starts from 0 0.1, and little by little goes to 0 0.5, which is the steady state. Now remember, for the phase diagrams, what I usually do is discard the transient. So this initial part right here is the transient behavior. I discard that, and I only plot the steady state. So basically, the phase diagram is one single point, the black dot that you see right here. So what is the difference? The cobweb diagram uh, depicts the trajectory of the system, uh, but not like that, not with respect to the iterations. It depicts, it depicts I'm sorry, the trajectory <clears throat> with respect to uh, consecutive values. So let's explain this. So on the right, you see the cobweb diagram. Let's see the basics. So uh, the diagram, again, has to do with x i minus 1 to the x i. Okay, so these are the two uh, axes. This is the bisector right here. Okay, so it represents uh, all the values that are equal to the next one. Uh, xi minus 1 x is equal to xi. And uh, the black curve right here is f, which is actually uh, the function that defines the logistic map. Okay, so f right here gives us the relation between consecutive values. So here... Uh, is the cobweb diagram. Let's explain how we plot it. Okay, so we are starting from x0. Here in the cobweb, we don't discard the transient behavior. Okay, we plot the transient as well. If you like, you may discard it, but let's uh, begin by not discarding the transient. So we start from 0 0.1, right? So that's x0. 0, 0 0.1, that's the first point right here. Okay, where is this mapped? It is mapped to x1. I'm going to find this point by looking at uh, the value of the function f. So from x0, you can follow my mouse. From x0, we go right here, which is x1. So how can we know how we go from x1 to x2? We are simply find x1 in the bisector. So from x1, we go right here in the bisector. So it directly gives us the value of x1, right? So now I can understand by plotting a vertical line that x1 is mapped into the next point, which is x2, right? So this is x2 right here. So where is x2 mapped? Well, let's go again into the bisector. Follow my mouse, please. So this is x2. And x2, by plotting a vertical line and seeing where does it intersect f, it intersects f right here. So this point right here is x3, right? So where does x3 go next? Well find x3 in the bisector right here. So this is x3, and it gets mapped into x4. So this is x4. Where does it go next? Well, find x4 into the bisector. So this is the point of x4, and x4 gets mapped into x5. And then x5 goes into uh, the steady state. Okay, so it ends up into this simple point right here. Okay, so this sort of uh, jagged, uh, you know, jump gives us the trajectory of the system with respect to each individual state. We go from x0 to x1, then follow x1 into the bisector, go into x2, and so on. Okay, so this is the Cobweb diagram. You see, it is much uh, different from before because it gives us, uh, you know, the trajectory of the system between consecutive iterations. So it's a very nice diagram. You can see it actually here clearer uh, without the individual lines. So this is a clear depiction of the cobweb. We start from x0, <clears throat> go into x1, 
find x1 in the bisector, go into x2, find x2 in the bisector, go to x3, find x3 in the bisector, go to x4, find x4 in the bisector, go into x5, and so on, until you reach the steady state. Nice. So it's very easy to plot. And uh, even in more complex situations, you can plot it the exact same way. So, <clears throat> see another case for r equals 0 0.8. Again, we have period 1. But you see the transient here is a bit oscillatory. So it oscillates a bit back and forth, up and down, until it reaches the steady state. So let's see how the cobweb looks in this case. So again, uh, we start from 0 0.5. So this is x0. And we follow the exact same procedure. We look into the curve of the function. So x0 gets mapped into x1. This is x1. Follow x1 into the bisector. So it gets mapped into x2. You see now, since the curve is below the bisector, we don't go up, we go back. We go, I'm sorry, we go down. But it's the same idea. Uh, we plot the vertical line and we follow uh, the curve, right? So x0, x1, follow x1 into the bisector. This is x2. Follow x2 into the bisector, go up. This is x3. Follow x3 into the bisector, go down. This is x4. I have mentioned it here. Follow x4 into the bisector. This is x5. Follow x5 into the bisector. This is x6. And of course, you see this oscillatory behavior until we end up in the steady state. So this small oscillatory behavior right here is what you see in this small region. So again, slightly different from before, but I can plot it following the exact same rules, right? So that's the nice cobweb. It gives us an understanding that we have an oscillation as we move into the steady state. Now, if we have period two for R equals 3.3, for example, you see in the phase diagram, we only plot the steady state, which is two points, right? Well, cobweb, we have the exact same behavior, but let's see how it is plotted, okay? So this is the cobweb. So we start again from 0 0.5. We go from 0 0.5 through the curve to x1, follow x1 into the bisector, then we go into x2, follow x2 into the bisector, go into x3, follow x3 into the bisector, go into x4, follow x4 into the bisector, and go to x5, and so on and so on. As you can understand, we have now fallen into periodic behavior. So this is how periodic behavior looks in the cobweb, right? We have two intersections. <clears throat> so the trajectory uh, intersects this curve into this point right here and this point right here. And of course, these are the two period points that you see uh, in the phase diagram. So this point and this point are actually this point and this point, right? So clearer as that. I mean, it's very simple to plot it. What if we have period, period four? Well, same idea, here we have period 4. For the phase diagram, we only plot the steady state, so we have 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, points. Let's see how the cobweb works. We start from 0 0.5, so let's see. 0 0.5 is x0. We go into x1 through the curve, follow x1 into the bisector, then go down into x2, follow x2 into the bisector, go into x3, follow x3 into the bisector, we go into x4, follow x4 into the bisector. We go into x5, follow x5 into the bisector. We go into x6, x6 follow x6 into the bisector. We go into x7, and so on. And you can clearly understand we have now fallen into periodic behavior. Simple as that. And not only that, but we can actually understand the uh, transitioning between states. So in the phase diagram here, we can understand what are the uh, transitioning between uh, the four states, in what order. But here I can understand, if I'm here, next point is, well, here. When I'm here, next point is here, then next point is here, then next point is here, and so on. So I can understand the transitioning between the four points of the period. This one, this one, this one, and this one, right? So a very nice diagram. And again, when I have a period four, uh, no period 4, I'm sorry, period 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. <clears throat> the diagram is basically, I'm sorry, the same as before. So let's see it. So again, we start from 0 0.5. So starting position, we go into x1, then through the bisector into x2, 
through the bisector into x3, <clears throat> through the bisector into x4, through the bisector into x5, okay, then x6, then x7, and then again through x8, and then the trajectory repeats itself. So I immediately understand that I have four individual uh, I'm sorry, I have a periodic uh, behavior with four individual states, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, and eight, right? And as I told you earlier, you may choose to plot or not plot the transient. <clears throat> so this is uh, the same diagram without the transient behavior. Obviously, it looks much clearer. Uh, so it's up to you to decide if you want to include it or not. Of course, what happens now that we have... Uh, in this case, a chaotic behavior. Well, in the phase diagram, the chaotic behavior pretty much uh, gives us an innumerable number of points. So we, uh, <clears throat> with all these points, we follow all of the curve right here, as you see, uh, just because we don't have a period. And this means that uh, the points cover all of the curve of the map. And you can observe the same behavior through the cobweb. Right. So since we have an absence of periodic behavior, the cobweb diagram intersects the traject the I'm sorry, <clears throat> the function of the map into in numerous different points, which are actually infinite. So here I have plotted, I think, 100 individual values. If you plot 200 or 300 or even more, you will, you will simply end up uh, by taking, you know, a much, much denser diagram, uh, but the behavior will be the same. So here on the cobwebs, when you see very dense trajectories like that, it is an indication that we have chaos, right? So simple as that. And uh, you can plot the same diagram with uh, many different maps, of course. Uh, so for example, if I choose another map, uh, you will pretty much obtain the same behavior. But before I show you, I show you that, let's see this diagram right here. I have plotted two different uh, functions. I'm sorry, I have plotted the logistic map for two different parameter values. You can see how the curve changes. It goes higher and higher. And it's important to note that the intersections of the curve with the bisector indicate the equilibria. Because if the trajectory falls into this point, the next value of the map will be the same because we are exactly on the bisector. So if the trajectory uh, you know, starts here or ends up here, it will remain here indefinitely. So you can immediately understand uh, what are the equilibria of the map. So this is another uh, pro to having uh, you know, uh, cobweb maps, uh, cobweb diagrams plotted. Okay. So as I promised, let's talk about the sign map as well. Uh, Slightly different uh, formula than the logistic map, <clears throat> but the idea is the same. So here, for example, that I have chaotic behavior for r equals two. <clears throat> the phase diagram uh, pretty maps pretty map you know ends up all around the curve of the map, and you will observe the same behavior from the cobweb diagram, right? So the trajectory pretty much covers innumerable points following uh, all of the uh, function uh, of the map. Right, so you see this sort of dense diagram that is indicative of chaotic behavior. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Uh, if you have any questions, please plot them, uh, write them down in the comments. I will reply to every comment. And of course, uh, in the description of the video, you will find the link uh, with MATLAB codes for plotting your own cobweb diagrams. So thank you very much.